Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and happy day to all especially to my IBM 536 Intercultural Management Lecturer Sir Muhammad Reza bin Bustami Hi Sir, my name is Muhammad Aki bin Kamaru Bahrain with the student ID of 2021101761 So today I will be presenting on Hofstede Culture Dimension for the country of India for my individual video presentation assignment So stay tuned Now, let's take a look on the facts of India. The facts about India is that it has more than 1.4 billion of population as at 10 January 2020. And I believe that it is increasing fast from time to time. From the population, we can see that it is a huge population in India, which they are being classified as the second world's largest population. India is estimated to contribute 18% of the world's population. From the video, we can see that the reality of India is always busy, packed with people everywhere in India, even on the road. And from the video also, we can see that they are very traditional minded as most of them enjoy wearing traditional clothes like sari. Okay, that's just some fact about India. So now let's watch another interesting video about our topic. In the 1970s, psychologist Dr. Geert Hofstede published a decades long study to identify and understand cultural differences that affect communication. His studies broke down six dimensions that distinguish one culture from another. So, let me conclude from the video and make it short and simple for you. Hofstede Culture Dimension was developed by Dr. Gerd Hofstede, which you can tell why the Culture Dimension was named as Hofstede. He is a Dutch social psychologist. He was born in October 1929 in Netherlands. He graduated from a mechanical engineer and later decided to have his PhD in psychology come lot. Most of his studies, he focuses on the intercultural studies and here you go, the hosted culture dimension. Under this culture dimension, there are six dimensions as you can see in the video later, but I will tell you more details on each dimension. You must be wondering on what is actually Hofstede culture dimension, don't you? Well, allow me to share some new knowledge to you. Hofstede culture dimension is a culture dimension that forms a fundamental framework of viewing others or to be as a differences in culture across countries. By utilizing these interpretive frameworks leads to a greater understanding of ourselves and others or in the other word, the framework is used to distinguish between different national cultures, the dimensions of cultures and assess their impact on a business test theme. So, since today we will be focusing on India, as you can see here, it is a graph taken from the Hofstede Insight that interpret on the behavior of Indian society. As I've mentioned earlier, there are six dimensions and these are the indicators showing how India is. So, I will explain to you more about each dimension. So, this is the very first dimension of the Hofstede culture dimension. The first one is power distance. Power distance is defined as the extent to which the less powerful members of institutions and organizations within a country expect and accept that power is distributed unequally. This dimension deals with the fact that all individuals in societies are not equal, which it expresses the attitude of the culture towards these inequalities among us. Now, let's take a look on India's relation to power distance. From the graph earlier, it indicates that the power distance index in India shows how high in this dimension, 77, indicating an appreciation for hierarchy and the top-down structure in society and organizations. India society are also considered as a paternalistic leadership, which the employees are expected to be directed clearly and as their functions and what is expected of them. Or in short, the hierarchy are clearly defined, present and unchallenged. Real power is centralized even though it may not appear to be and manages count on the obedience of their team members. Control is familiar even the psychological security and attitude towards managers are formal even if one is on first name basis. Communication is top down and directive in its style and often give feedback which is negative and never back up the ladder. 
Now the second dimension which is individualism and versus collectivism. The fundamental issue addressed by this dimension is the degree of interdependence society maintains among its members. It has to do with whether people's self-image is defined in terms of I or we. In individualist societies, people are supposed to look after themselves and their direct family only. In collectivist societies, people belong to in a groups that take care of them in exchange for loyalty. India with a rather intermediate score of 48 is a society with both collectivistic and individualist traits. The collectivist side means that there is a high preference for belonging to a larger social framework in which individuals are expected to act in accordance to the greater good of one's defined in groups. For a collectivist to be rejected by one's peer to be or to be thought lower by the ones extended and immediate in groups leaves him or her ruderless with a, a sense of emptiness. Now comes to the third dimensions, masculinity versus femininity. A high score of masculine on this dimension indicates that the society will be driven by competition, achievement and success, with success being defined by the winner or best in the field, while a low score of feminine on the dimension means that the dominant values in society are caring for others and quality of life. A feminine society is one where quality of life is a sign of success and standing out from the crowd is not admirable or in short, wanting to be the best is the masculine society and liking what you do is the feminine society. India scores 56 on this dimension and is thus considered a masculine society. India is actually very masculine in terms of visual display of success and power. The designer brand label, the flash and orientation that goes with advertising one's success is widely practiced. They appreciate on people's success and willing to work hard towards the success. For India, work is the center of one's life and visible symbols of success in the workplace are very important. And the fourth dimension is the uncertainty avoidance index which this dimension has to do with the way that a society deals with the fact that the future can never be known. As example, should we try to control the future or just let it happen? This ambiguity brings with it anxiety and different cultures have learned to deal with this anxiety in different ways. The extent to which the members of a culture feel threatened by ambiguous or unknown situations and have created beliefs and institutions that try to avoid this is reflected in the score on uncertainty. Avoidance. Let's take a look on the graph indicator. It shows that India has medium low preference for avoiding uncertainty, which means that they got acceptance of imperfections. The tolerance for the as expected is high. And they are not following the rules, rely on innovative methods to bypass the system, and lastly, they do adjust by adjusting main cause, uniqueness, or problems. In India, nothing is impossible as long as you know how to adjust. The second last is the dimension of short term versus long term. This dimension describes how every society has to maintain some links with its own past while dealing with the challenges of the present and future. And societies prioritize these two essential goals indifferently. Normative societies, which score low on this dimension, for example, prefer to maintain time honored traditions and norms while viewing societal change with suspicion. Those with a culture with scores high, on the other hand, take a more pragmatic approach. They encourage thrift and efforts in modern education as a way to prepare for the future. What do the graphs say? With an intermediate score of 51 in this dimension, a dominant preference in India culture cannot be determined. In India, the concept of karma dominates religious and philosophical thought. Countries like India has a great tolerance for religious views from all over the world. In India, there is an acceptance that there are many truths and often depends on the seeker. India is a society that have a high score on pragmatism, typically forgive a lack of punctuality, a changing game plan based on changing reality, and a general comfort with discovering the fated path as one goes along rather than playing to an exact plan. Lastly, the six dimensions, it is about the indulgence versus restraint. For this dimension, it is defined as the extent to which people try to control their desires and impulses based on the way they were raised. Indulgence stands for a society that allows relatively free gratification of basic and natural human drives related to enjoying life and having fun. Restraint stands for a society that suppresses gratification of needs and regulates it by means of strict social norms. Relatively weak control is called indulgence and relatively strong control is called restraint. 
Conscience can therefore be described as indulgent or restrained. The indicator shows India receive a low score of 26 in this dimension, meaning that it is a culture of restraint. Societies with a low score in this dimension have a tendency to cynicism and pessimism. Also, in contrast to indulgent societies, restrained societies do not put much emphasis on leisure time and control the gratification of their desires. People with disorientation have the perception that their actions are restrained by social norms and feel that indulging themselves is somewhat wrong. So that is all about how state dimension culture and relating it to India. Now let's, let's take a look back what are the six dimensions. Come and follow me and see it out loud. The first one we have power distance in that second, the individualism versus collectivism, third, masculinity versus femininity, fourth, uncertainty, avoidance in next fifth, short term versus long term, and last indulgence versus restraint. So that is all from me, Mama Thank you for your time. Have a good day, everyone. Until we meet again.